Today we have a special guest joining us, Jonathan Escoffrey, a talented American author with, of course, Jamaican roots. And he's going to unravel the captivating story that he has in the book, If I Survive You, which focuses on the lives of a Jamaican family's pursuit of a brighter future in Miami. Um, I won't give it all away. Jonathan will tell me. Morning, Jonathan. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Really happy to be with you uh, today. All right. So tell me a little bit about what inspired If I Survive You. Well, um, just to give people who are watching a, a little bit of a, a taste for the book, it's about a family of Jamaicans who leave Kingston in, 19, in the 1970s and they wind up emigrating to uh, the U.S., specifically to Miami, Florida. And um, for, for me, as the author of this, I was really interested in exploring um, a family dynamic uh, that was a little bit close to my own, um, mm -hmm. with my own parents leaving around 1979 and um, bringing my brother over to the U.S. and then having me there. Uh, the impetus for that is that I, I always, uh, as a child, as a teenager, as a young man, really wanted to be a writer. Uh, but I, I found myself writing these stories that were so far outside of myself and so far outside of my own experience that they, they felt a bit flat. Mm -hmm. And so when it came to writing this book, it, it kind of stumbled upon me that, you know, I could write about my own experience and um, think about, you know, all of the Jamaican diaspora um, that we find in the United States and, and think about, you know, what we have going on, which I think is uh, worthy, very worthy of, of literature and the arts. Representation is absolutely important. So tell me a little bit about the central characters and um, the journey that they, they undertake in this book. So um, the book operates as a kind of, it's a link story collection, but it's also kind of a novel in stories. Each story operates as a chapter that's kind of building towards a, a larger narrative about this one family. And we follow various family members throughout the book as they're struggling to build a life and in some cases rebuild a life mm -hmm. in the US. Um, and the character who gets the most stage time is the one character who's born in the United States. His name is Trelawney, ah. and he's trying to figure himself out. <laughs> uh, he's trying to figure out, you know, how, how does he fit, um, in a sense, within his own family as, as the one U.S.-born member, mm -hmm. um, but also how does he fit within the context of the United States? And, you know, how does he fit as a Jamaican or, you know, someone of the diaspora? How is he going to kind of honor his lineage and carry that forward in a way that's going to suit him and also be accepted by others? Because a big theme of the book is that a lot of people are questioning who he is and, you know, um, asking him. In fact, the opening line is it begins with what are you? And so a lot of people are questioning, you know, who is he? What is he? How does he fit? Yeah. What I like about the structure, um, Jonathan, is it really is a reflection of the Caribbean experience. I wouldn't say just the Jamaican or maybe the migratory experience because a lot of people leave here and go to the US, but it's, it's a personal journey, but it's also a family journey and it's, it's a community journey <laughs> when they get to the US. So, so I, I think in the ways that the chapters are organized and each character has a voice, it captures that kind of dynamic for us. The, the title's interesting to me, um, if I survive you, because it speaks to uh, challenge. Um, it speaks to, and, and so what are some of the social and other types of challenges that come to bear in this book? Well, one of the challenges, and, and you mentioned uh, many of them, um, but another challenge is this kind of generational challenge of how the younger generation, especially within the diaspora, might not simply be concerned with that movement out of Jamaica, but you know what it means to grow up in a country that is not necessarily welcoming to you, um, which means that a lot of us in the diaspora are looking back towards the home country, uh, looking back towards, in this case, uh, uh, Jamaica, and then wondering, you know, what it might have been like had we had had our families stayed. 
um, how might we perhaps potentially anyway fit uh, yeah. in a way that, that we may not um, in, in, in a country like the U.S. with all of its problems of, uh, you know, anti-blackness in particular, anti-immigration uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but with the main character, Trelawney, he's figuring out he's, he's coming into his adulthood um, around the time of the financial crash, the, the, around 2008, 2009, he's graduated college and he's having a lot of difficulties uh, financially and he's trying to figure out um, how to keep a roof over his head and he's taking a lot of interesting jobs that are actually challenging who he is, um, challenging his morals and per personal ethics, but again, also challenging you know, how he identifies uh, yeah. both racially and ethnically. Yeah. It's displacement, it's trying to find who you are, and, and man, that's a tough journey. Um, for you, how did you find yourself as an author? I mean, Stanford, and I mean, all these accomplishments. Tell me about it. Yeah, you know, again, I mentioned that I always wanted to be a writer. Um, and for me, education was very important. Um, I, I, I don't think I, I wanted to believe that at the beginning of my journey, but um, at a certain point, I realized that I needed to know more. I needed to read more. I needed people who had read a lot to put good books in front of me. And um, that started with my undergraduate education in, in Miami at Florida International University. Uh, it was there that I learned that there are graduate programs. Um, there are programs uh, that are dedicated to creative writing. So I went away and did my MFA in creative writing at the University of Minnesota. And I got a really great foundation where um, people were putting wonderful books that were expanding my understanding of what it meant to write and, and tell your story. And for me, I was able to take my family's stories in a sense and put that on the page and then obviously add a lot of imagination to, yeah. to, to make sure that we're captivating a reader. Yeah. Um, I, I like it. Yesterday we spoke to an author who was writing about the Windrush experience. And I was saying to her that a lot of times here in Jamaica, we, 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 we know family migrate. Uh, we know we get a burial. <laughs> we, I mean, when we speak, we don't always share the tough times and the journey. And I think for a lot of people, they think once they leave Jamaica, everything is uh, milk and honey. And so, uh, you know, it's important that we respect the experiences and people like you put them in books like these for us to be able to understand it. Where do we get a copy? Um, that's a great question. Uh, typically, you can find you can find it online. My website is jonathanescoffrey.com mm -hmm. and there are links to the various sources where you can uh, purchase a copy. Yeah. Any other projects coming up that we can look out for? Uh, I'm working on a novel. Uh, there's not a release date yet, um, but uh, I have a, a it's under contract with my publisher, FSG and MCD Books. OK. And um, hopefully before long, you'll you'll see that out on uh, bookshelves. Excellent. When's the last time you, you came to Jamaica? I was there for the Calabash Festival in May. Nice. Uh, Calabash happens every two years. So, you know, if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. It was the best time of my life, honestly. And um, 2025 probably in May, <laughs> you can uh, look forward to that. Shout out to Justin, Kwame, and Colin, visionaries Absolutely. of Calabash. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and congratulations on a great book. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Author of If I Survive You, Jonathan Escoffrey. More and smile after the break. <laughs>